Hi, it's William from Boxer 2 Valve, and we're back at it again to get this bike a little closer to getting done. Uh, if you've been following along with our series here, we're getting bit by bit the front end completed, and now we're down to the electrical part. That's what we're going to be focusing on today. Uh, first of all, I'm going to start with putting a new battery in here. This, it's got an uh, Odyssey battery in there. It doesn't fit right. There's nothing wrong with the battery. It's a very good battery, but we're going to make it all fit correctly and put the correct battery in and clean that up, starting with that and then moving forward with the wiring. And um, this is a cool battery that we import. And um, it's uh, a gel battery. At least we can fish this thing out of here. This is what's really cool about it is it's got a little carrying handle. And we can snap that in. go so there are the carrying handles installed and it's a nice feature that you can just lift the battery up because it's they're pretty heavy and uh, what I like about this battery is it is a gel battery and it's very true to original in terms of its shape and dimensions it's the correct size it's got the nice little caps here which can be removed like that and it also comes with new hardware. So it makes it really easy for lifting the battery in and out of the bike, and then you can store the carry handle in the tool tray underneath the seat. So first I want to take care of getting rid of this old battery here. All right, let me just disconnect the wires first. Ground's already been disconnected. There's all kinds of stuff going to this thing. It had like a additional outlet on the fairing so we're going to sort of clean this all up. And these, the battery was held in place, these Velcro straps. Great idea. Just get rid of all this stuff and start from scratch here. All kinds of things we don't need anymore. So there's that. Okay. Now the battery tray on the model lever models is designed in such a way that you can use the big battery, so to speak, or the smaller battery. Um, when you use the smaller battery, then you use uh, uh, rubber straps, which we also carry. I kind of like the big battery, like this big gel battery, and so that's what we're going to run, and I'll show you how that is installed properly in case you're working on one like this where all the original mounting hardware, et cetera, is gone. I have all the correct stuff ready to go. Okay, so here again, this is a really cool system. I can just drop the battery into place, like so, and then take off the handle. That, that'll go into the tool tray underneath the seat or in the tail section. So I've got some parts here that I ordered, and these are the two spokes. They look just like wheel spokes. In fact, they probably are with some application. And then there are two plastic nuts. One of them looks like this, and the other one like this. And this is the same nut, actually, that is used on the small instruments in the fairing. It's the same exact part number. And then this part here. This is not something that we probably will carry. These are original BMW parts, but just so you know what they look like if you need to order them. And so then these, this fits right on there like that in, a, in an angle. And then the spoke goes in this hole here. And on like that. And then the small nut goes here for clearance reasons. And then the other spoke goes in. And this longer nut goes on here. Very cool. Now the battery is solidly mounted. I'm gonna go ahead and hook up the positive terminals right now. And I can use the new supplied hardware. 
nice thing about this gel battery too is there's no vent hose to do, deal with. And um, yeah, they hold a long charge. In fact, I have this battery on my bike in Germany. I have an R100RS in Germany. I've had that thing over there for probably 10 years now or so. And I go back about once a year and ride. And when I'm not there, when I, my ritual is when I, when I leave, I take the battery out of the bike, store the bike at my buddy's house, and then I put the battery uh, on a charger with an Optimate uh, battery charger and just leave it on there. And I've had the battery now for seven years and uh, it still works great. I hope it's still working when I um, get back to Germany to ride it again. But um, if, if for any reason it, I need to replace it, I would always get this battery because it's just amazing how long this thing's lasted. Now on the negative battery, I'm just gonna disconnect that down here at the gearbox. Okay, so this cable's in okay shape. It's totally serviceable. But uh, what I like to do is modify the connector a little bit so that I can just slip it over the uh, bolt at the gearbox. And that way it's real easy to disconnect without having to take the bolt all the way out every time you want to disconnect the wire. So to do that, just going to cut a little piece out of the middle and make sure that it fits over the bolt. So it needs to be just trimmed a little bit more. That's it. So now I can put this bolt back in. And by the way, this is the vent bolt for the gearbox. Make sure that you have a bolt that looks like this with a hole in it and that you can actually see light through that, which I can on this one. And then uh, th this is the correct bolt that goes in this application here. Okay, so now I'll, I'll go ahead and hook this up to the negative side of the battery, but leave this undone. But when I get ready to do the um, testing on the electrical system eventually, this will just slip right in now like that. And then I just need to give the bolt a couple twists and it'll be tight and provide a good ground. There we go, Sano. So that part's done. Now let's move on to the wiring. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to get all the wires into the headlight bucket and make some connections. You'll notice on, if you, if you do this conversion and you have a mono lever, RT or RS, and you're, you take it off, the, the, there's a grommet on the top of the headlight bucket. You want to take that out. That looks like this, just a rubber grommet. There's no hole in it, but we're going to change that in a minute. We're going to put a hole in there. I'm going to show you how, how I like to do that. And then while we're at it, we have this other grommet which we're going to want to reuse that was for the headlight we're going to combine the wiring for the headlight with this rest of this wiring that went to the um, fairing originally so to in order to get this apart without you know destroying this grommet i'm just going to pop the connectors out of here that's really easy to do so of course you want to note how this comes apart i'm just going to make a, a, a little Notation on a piece of paper. Yeah, so brown, yellow, white, just so you don't forget about it. Make a, make a little sketch here. Brown, yellow, white. And then you need a small screwdriver, a little flat blade screwdriver. And then you can go into these connectors and slip it right inside this little notch, this little tab there. If you push that back, that you can um, pull these connectors straight out of the out of the little housing like that, and then once you do, then just bend that. Now you've basically flattened out the tab here. You just want to go in and bend that out a little bit so it'll attach again like that. You just do that with all three connectors. Just goes in that little slot here. Pass against that tab. comes out like so. Just 
bend the tap back out again. There's that. Okay, these are all ready to go back together again. And this little uh, barcode thing, we probably don't need that. I'm just gonna get rid of it. And now I'll be able to, I think, carefully, just kind of push these connectors through this grommet. Okay, the goal here was to pull these wires out of the grommet without damaging it, which I think I've been able to do. And now we can go ahead and enlarge the holes. I'll show you kind of the scope of the project. We have this uh, wiring conduit, variety of sizes, and I've determined this one is a 12 millimeter, is probably just about perfect. It's the same as the size here that these wires go through. And there's enough room to add these wires in as well. So I think it'll work fine. And the original conduit here is really hard and brittle. And so we're gonna be able to replace it with this new piece here. So in order to have this all kind of come together right, then I want to make the hole in this grommet the correct size so that that'll fit in here. And on that other grommet that I took out a minute ago from the headlight has to be sized appropriately for this conduit here. And so to do that, what works very well is a hole cutter. I mean, you could cut it out with a razor blade or something, but you're gonna get an uneven um, cut. If you have something like this, it works really well. This is a set from Kuko, the um, same company that makes the pullers that I love so much. And it's a really neat set because it, it allows you to make different holes for, it's really for cutting out gaskets or whatever. It works really great, but it works perfectly for this application. So we're going to go make these holes right now. All right, I'm going to pop some holes in here now. So I'm going to take a piece of wood. I really hate to ruin my perfectly, uh, my perfect workbench <laughs> surface here, but this, anyway, a piece of wood is a good idea. And then these come in different sizes. Uh, this is, this conduit's 14 millimeters. The closest I have is really 13. It goes 11, 13, 15, but that's fine, you know, it's rubber. So 13 is ideal. So I'm just gonna set that right in the middle like that. Just like so. So it's nice and centered. And then give it a nice little wrap with a hammer. Make sure that's nice and centered in there. We got a Really nice, clean, centered hole in the grommet. Super cool. And the other size I need on this one's a 10. So we have a nine, which is great. A little, little interference is a great thing. So here again, it can fit right in the middle. Squeeze that down inside. And here again, a perfect grommet, ready to reinstall. Okay, so now I'm gonna pull this wiring harness out so we can have a look at it a little bit. And it's a little bit funky, but it's all good. Take some of this tape away. And we can start to see what's going on with these wires. Now, originally, this harness went to a gang plug in the fairing of the RT. And we don't need this anymore. We need the wires, but we don't need this connector. So just going to go ahead and snip that off. It's, these wires are way longer than they need to be. I always keep a chunk of wires on there because you never know. This might need to be repurposed and then you can solder it so this could be reused sometime. I got a whole box of stuff like this. Don't throw too much away. <laughs> okay, now this can be removed like that. And then we'll take these wires that we used before, or, or these uh, headlight wires. And uh, I can't slide this off, so I'm just gonna have to, sl to uh, cut it. Cool, so I just basically sl sliced it right down the middle. And that can come off of there. Now I'll take my new piece of conduit and approximate the length that I'll need for these wires to come through. That should do it. Cool. Okay, the first thing I'm gonna do is put these three wires in that have these connectors on here. Now these, these 
uh, 90 degree connectors will fit through here. A little bit tight, but they will totally fit. And then once these have passed through, then we can feed the other wires through. It's a lot easier to pull a connector like this through than it is to push it. So what I like to do in this case is just take a little piece of safety wire like this. And then you just have to slip the wire through the connector end like so, to the little loop, and then you should be able to just pretty much pull it through. You still need to kind of help it, but there's one. Two. Cool, so there's all three of the headlight wires. Now we can take the rest of these wires that we snipped. Should be able to just push those all through in one big go. Now what I'll do is go ahead and tape this all back up at this junction. Get that all kind of cleaned up, just like they did at the factory. Just kind of remove the old tape and put everything together instrument. Okay, so without, now we've successfully combined both of those little harnesses into this one in the new flexible conduit. And um, I'll just need to then clean up this junction here and uh, put some new tape on there. So I'm going to first of all get rid of this kind of old tape that has lost its adhesion down to the where it starts to be good again. And this stuff can get kind of grimy. So I just washed my hands. I'm going to also try to get some of this grime off of there because the tape will stick better if you do that. So I've got this pretty cool tape. It's very much like the original. It, uh, it's a kind of a fiber tape. It's got, it's pretty sticky, good stuff. So I'm gonna take a length of that off and start wrapping that junction. Looks indistinguishable from the original tape. Very cool. Okay, one more piece of tape here and then I think we got it pretty solid. So here's, this is all the original taping, and this is the part I just did. It looks pretty much the same, and uh, it's pretty cool. So now we just have to, we can put this back the way it was through the center of the, of the uh, frame. Okay, and this goes up like so. Now I'm gonna take that grommet that I just increased the hole size on. Now the connectors go through easily, of course. And all this stuff too. The perfect fit. Okay, sometimes you have to mess with it a little bit, but I was able to get that grommet put back in place. Cool, so there we have those wires in there and the conduit is right in there real nicely and it's not impeding anything with the steering so I think that's a, a good start okay and then I'm just gonna go ahead and zip tie that wire to the frame backbone perfect alrighty so now moving right along we got a lot of wires here now before I go any farther I actually could Go ahead and put that uh, headlight connector back on that we took off a moment ago. You know, kind of separate the wires out like that. And then we had brown. You could hear that click as that went into place. Um, I already had bent the tabs back out again, so there we go. That's our headlight 
wires ready to go. And before we do anything with these, let's get the rest of the wires introduced so we have the whole picture. Now we come back to the wires for the instruments and our new ignition switch system, which came out of the, well, it came out of my desire to put the K75 um, style handlebars on there with this dash pad. Now all this stuff is all coming together. So first of all, this is a ignition switch from um, probably a K100 or I don't know, K75, I don't know. It's, I got it used, they're not available anymore. But I got it with a key and it works and everything's really good with that. So let's make sure not to lose the key. If you find one of these used, which is the only way you will, they're no longer available. What you want to look for is that these tabs here on the sides aren't broken. A lot of times they are. So if you find one on eBay or something like that, then um, keep an eye out for those tabs because that's important for it to fit properly. Now the orientation is also somewhat important. The um, key slot facing upward or long, uh, as well as the wires, that's how it's go it goes into the dash pad. So yeah, that's how that is, in, is pushed into place. Um, the wires sticking up like that. And then the uh, little bezel can be pushed into place. Be really careful not to bend the little tabs. There we go, all right. This is a K75 uh, dash pad, K75 handlebars. And in, catch you, in case you didn't see the earlier episodes, you're just tuning in. What I did was I took these um, lower handlebar clamps here and I drilled and tapped a, uh, an M6 by one hole in here. If you need more information about that, scroll back to a few videos when we did all that. But uh, now this will fit nicely on here. Does that look cool or what? I think so. I really like it. Okay. There's probably, uh, there's a lot of ways you can wire one of these things. I mean, there's probably someone out there who has a much better idea, but uh, this is how I'm gonna do it. I've got these two harnesses that I need to put through that one grommet that we enlarged that goes to the hole. I don't wanna drill any more holes in the headlight bucket. So I'm gonna basically merge these two into one using a very similar technique to the factory. We're just gonna basically see how we can uh, figure out how long the tubing needs to be and trim it, trim it all a bit. So let's see, like that. And then this one to join it. Okay, so I'm kind of like looking for good routing Nice smooth bends and aesthetics too, always important. And so I, the wiring can come up like this and over onto the bracket. I think it would look good. Yeah, that's probably a good way to do that. And then straight into the hole in the headlight bucket. So it's good to have a plan before you actually do anything. I'm just gonna throw a zip tie on here to hold it in place for right now. Cool, that's pretty good. And then this one, what I'm gonna do is basically, I'm gonna make just a little slit with a razor blade in the conduit where I, where I wanna cut it. Just to, it's one way to mark it. Okie doke. So that's where I, I marked with that slip there. I'm just going to go ahead and carefully cut that off without damaging the wires, hopefully. All right. And then we'll keep this part on there. And the other one, I also made a mark where I want to cut it. Right there. Okay, so now my idea is to take put these wires through that conduit as well, the one that I just sort of severed. 
You can bring those into a Y like that. Okay, and I'm going to put a, some tape on there just to kind of hold it together and then finish it off with a nice piece of shrink tubing. So we carry shrink tubing in eight different sizes, ranging from 2.4 to 25.4 millimeter. And um, I've determined that this one is probably gonna be the best one. It's 12.8 millimeter, and it should fit very nicely over that junction that I just created here. So I'm gonna cut a piece off to more than cover that tape, about maybe something like that big. Make a nice clean cut over here on the bench. Slides nicely over the whole junction there, like so, over the tape. And then I'm going to hit that with the heat gun. And then we got that grommet that we cut the hole bigger a little while ago. Slide the wires through there. And that's a nice, snug interference fit. It's ideal. Okay, so now, now that I got that all set up, I'm going to take care about the routing of where the cables are, what I determined before, and get everything sort of lined up the way I envisioned it. All right, so I think I got the routing kind of the way I like it. It's going to go along the bracket here to the fairing and ties in with the ignition wiring. And now just need to uh, get that grommet to get back into the hole here. All right, there we have it. So we've made quite a bit of progress, actually, I think, because we've uh, got our dash pad installed finally with the ignition switch. We've got all the wiring, I think, pretty well cleaned up and heading into one direction so we can actually make all of our connections in one spot. Uh, headlight connectors back in place, everything's good. So that's pretty much all the time we have today for this video. So what we'll do is we'll, we'll stop now and pick up next time where we will actually make heads or tails of this, get the headlight installed and move on, on to other cool things on this project. So make sure you, that you subscribe if you haven't already to our YouTube channel. Join our newsletter at boxer2valve.com and you'll see um, links to some of the parts we use on here. And we love your comments. Please send them and uh, look forward to continuing on this project and uh, see you next time.